What up and welcome back to Boring Reviews. Jody here. Nick here. And today we're reacting to another Wilty. Wilty. Or won't he? And we're reacting to Lee Mack's Walk Around the Clock Cookbook. That makes me think of that song. Um, not Walk Around the Clock, but uh Dance Around the Clock. I don't know. The Happy Days song. I think it's Happy Days. Anyways, off track there. We are excited for this because Wilty never undelivers, if that makes sense. Super excited to see what's going on. I have no idea about, I know what a walk is, W O K, but no idea what this is going to be about. So I'm excited. Did he write his own cookbook? We're going to find out. If you like our reaction anyway, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be aware of our next upload video. All right. Here she. Don't even say. Having recently got into Eastern cuisine, this Christmas sees the launch of my new cookbook. <laughs> recently, so you write a book. Lee Max, Walk Around the Clock. <laughs> hmm. David. Give us some of the recipes from Walk Around the Clock. Shall I give you my favourite ones? Give that, just your favourite six or seven. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, so I like uh, I like quite simplistic because, you, because Sim believe, in, simplistic. believe it or not, believe it or not, <laughs> I thought simplistic so, raw pork. <laughs> so, sweet and sour pork balls uh, is one of my specialities. <laughs> how would you cook your sweet and sour pork balls? Well, I'll tell you exactly how I can how I would cook my sweet and sour pork balls. Uh, for nine pound ninety nine, you can find out. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go to the publishers with this idea? I went to Penguin because they're the only book publishers I've heard of. <laughs> How keen were they? Because I have to say, if I was a publisher Penguin. and you came wow. to me, yeah. I wouldn't be interested. Well, ironically, <laughs> Penguin didn't p -p -p pick it up straight away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work in conjunction with a proper chef? Of course, I was helped a little bit. Who? By whom? It's a friend of mine, works at the Chinese restaurant. What's the name of this person? You wouldn't oh. know him. Well, give it a try. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jenkins. <laughs> I've been going into the Chinese restaurant a lot recently. Mm. And I've been really sort of learning about it and savouring the dishes. And, and I keep saying, Steve, this is fantastic. What is this? And then he says something in Chinese, which I don't understand. And then I said, Steve Jenkins is Chinese. <laughs> he was adopted uh, when he was a kid. By <laughs> taken to China. But he was an English baby. Yeah. <laughs> this is a true story. They took, uh, they took Steve Jenkins. Um, they Did, adopted they, him. They adopted Even him. though he was a baby, he was known as Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he was, then he was called Baby Steve. So this, this Chinese baby couple Steve. adopt <laughs> Baby Steve. Stephen. He has got his full name. He's got Steve Jenkins. They don't change his name. <laughs> but they couldn't change his name. They couldn't they to call him Yeah, because Steve you're, he's, <laughs> he's clearly an English baby, <laughs> then he's going to grow up looking Western. Was he, was he the only Steve Jenkins <laughs> in his school? <laughs> <laughs> Train more on my ability to cook and less on my ability to understand Are the basic any... systems of adopting children and taking them to China. <laughs> what was the hardest <laughs> recipe to perfect? The hardest one was to perfect was definitely the beef in oyster sauce with chilli. <laughs> How would you go about cooking that? Well, first of all, I will get my wok. Yes. Very bold yeah. of you. Yes, yeah, so I get my wok down from my wok shelf. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wok shelf? Wok shelf, yes. How many woks do you own? About seven. Seven walks. <laughs> you don't. How many walks have you got? One. Well, that's why you haven't got a book out at Christmas, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so I light the burner. Uh -uh. That's the noise. <laughs> and I heat the oil. Put the oil down. Peanut oil, actually. Don't use olive oil. Mm. Peanut oil. So I put the peanut oil Sounds around. Sounds delicious. The tr trick with the wok is not to put the oil at the bottom of the pan. It's to dribble it round the edge. You know the way you say, same way you do a toilet duck. Yeah. <laughs> And watch it slightly go down. <laughs> and, the, and the publisher said, probably don't use that analogy. Um, <laughs> so, let it all sink down to the bottom like that. Yeah? Give it a good spinning round. This is like peanut that. oil, even though an increasing number of people in Britain are, are allergic to, to Absolutely peanuts. Absolutely. It doesn't I do, bother you. No, I make it very clear to those people on the front of the book. I say, if you have a peanut allergy, you are not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, throw it in. You flash fry it. I'm there. 
Yes. Then you throw it in three or four different ingredients. Depends which there's different versions of it. But I'm going to go with the one with lots of greens. You've got lots of broccoli. You've got lots of carrots. You've got lots of a few sesame seeds. You're throwing it in. The thing is to feel the pan. Feel it. Become the pan. Become one with the pan. You flick it up, stir it round. That's when you add the sauce. That's when you've got to add the sauce, the oyster sauce. But it's homemade oyster sauce. How do you make homemade oyster sauce? I'll tell you exactly how you make homemade oyster sauce. You get some water from the tap. You soak your oysters in it. Yes, you do use oysters. You soak them for four weeks in water. <laughs> Go black, you get your squid ink, you squid ink it in, you mix it up, you then squid mash ink. it down, in, get it really liquidy. It's on the turn, but it's not gone off. You've got to get it just on the turn, you put it oh in, you whisk it around. It's it. not steady more because it oh, stop yeah. that. It's, gone there. it's simmering away like that. It all settles down, and you pour it onto the pan like that. 9 99 the book's yours. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are you thinking? It was very entertaining, but but was it? Well, I say very. It, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this one's. It it seems so obviously a lie. Right, that it could be true. Because you have to believe that. I mean, no offense to him. You you have celebrities all the time writing books that they have no business doing. You know, yeah. they, they don't really write any of it. They just put their name on it. I get yeah. it. So I guess that's possible. Um, the way he's describing it, it sounds like he knows nothing about cooking whatsoever, which he probably doesn't. Doesn't mean he can't have a cookbook. The seven walks is ridiculous. Um, it, there's just so much about it that's ridiculous, but I, unfortunately, I gotta say true. Because I can believe that a celebrity could have a cookbook. Okay, then I'm gonna say false. Oh, you think it's a lie? Ooh. Was it true? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't true. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> do, you, do you need a little time to discuss this with your team? No, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, firstly, it, it wasn't true off the card to start with, because there's no way Lee would bring out that sort of book. Why? I've, I've met him, it's evident. But why? <laughs> well, so, well, well, you know, he then went on to me. make it... Let's you don't know everything about that, me, David. That your collaborator in this book <laughs> yeah. called Steve Jenkins, who was adopted as a baby in this country, taken Second back to China. Not for long. No, no for his whole childhood. No, 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 he said they came back to Britain. Yeah, but no. when he was an adult. Or when he's yeah, an adult. Yeah. yeah, otherwise he'd have been able to speak English now, wouldn't he? How did you write a book with a man that only spoke Cantonese? Well, we just we had an interpreter. A Chinese fella called Brian Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're incredible, man. <laughs> yes. Like incredible as in not credible. <laughs> so we're saying it's a lie. Well, the audience are on tenterhooks. <laughs> Lee, was it the truth? <laughs> See, there's a slight part of me now thinking, I could actually bring this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's a lie. Oh. He has written a cookbook called Lee Max Walk Around the Clock. <laughs> See, Clearly. Clearly. There had been With so... Steve Jenkins. <laughs> yeah, this, I forgot about the Steve Jenkins part. That, uh, that was ridiculous. It would have been better if he said Steve Jenkins. He's like, well, he wanted an American name because we have a lot of Asian students who come to they us. Changed, yep. And they changed their names to American names, and they always seem to be like the same few names, um, but I could definitely see a Chinese man coming and changing his name. And honestly, on that topic, I do, I feel really bad that they feel like they have to, and I get it, like as the parents, oh, it's know. like, you know, they're going to have a hard time saying your name, and it's going to be a problem, and they just change it to Ashley or something like that, and you're going to be good. But there's this there's this book called The Name Jar. Yes, I have we it. we both read, yes. and we share with our students. Um that you really kind of change now i've never had that experience but you change your opinion about it if you have a different opinion because it's your name is so oh, it was trevor noah on this next one that's being <laughs> suggested to us um your name is so important to yourself it's who you're, you are it's your identity that if people are worth caring about or caring about you they're going to learn to say your name aside from that getting back to this i was just thinking the same thing like okay all this stuff there was a streak of nonsense being true, and so it's I okay, got ahead. Just yeah, just accept it and move on. Like someone said, someone said, you know, Nick, you're really competitive on this. Jody, I can tell if she loses, is no big deal, this or that. And that reminds me of, uh, should I say it? 
that reminds me of when we first got married. And I am. I'm very competitive. Me and my older brother, I mean, winning was like life. It was, it was our lifeblood. And when we were first getting married or before we got married or whatever, around that time, she had said she's not that competitive. You know, Nick, you're really competitive. She's not that competitive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because being around me for 16 not years. Not that competitive. Oh, my gosh. Not. You don't see the beast unleash. Not that competitive. <laughs> okay. Um, but I did appreciate that comment because absolutely I'm competitive. I can own that 100%. But I'm mad that I was wrong. I'm sorry. Why did you say lie? Lying. Oh, I totally thought the whole thing was fabricated, but I also spun it against that you. Way. But it seemed it, it just seems like a mess, a hot it's mess. Dangerous. You're gonna really let oysters sit in your sink water for four weeks? But my question is, if he's trying to convince them, why would he say he spoke to me in Chinese? Like, why add that part? Because they were on board. He's making it up, and he doesn't have it fully planned out. <laughs> Absolutely not. Thank you so much for watching our reaction to this. If you liked it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. Goodbye.